This animation displays transverse plane motions of the piriformis muscle. We will have posterior and superior views. In anatomic position, the line of pull of the piriformis passes posterior to the axis of rotation at the hip joint. Therefore, the piriformis is a lateral, external rotator of the femur or thigh at the hip joint. Here we have a posterior view. The axis of rotation is the dashed vertical line and the line of pull of the piriformis is displayed by the yellow arrow. The piriformis contracts and creates lateral rotation of the femur. Now we will have the femur flexed 90 degrees. If the femur is first flexed approximately 60 degrees or more, the line of pull of the piriformis changes to pass anterior to the axis of rotation. Therefore, the action of the piriformis changes to become medial, internal rotation of the femur or thigh at the hip joint. The axis of rotation is represented by the white dot and the line of pull by the yellow arrow. Now, when the piriformis contracts, it creates medial rotation of the femur. Now we have a superior view. Again, in anatomic position, the line of pull of the piriformis passes posterior to the axis of rotation at the hip joint. Therefore, the piriformis is a lateral rotator of the femur at the hip joint. The axis of rotation is represented by the white dot and the line of pull of the piriformis is represented by the yellow arrow. The piriformis contracts and creates lateral rotation of the femur. Now the femur is flexed 90 degrees again. And again, if the femur is flexed approximately 60 degrees or more, the line of pull of the piriformis changes to pass anterior to the axis of rotation. Therefore, the action of the piriformis changes to become medial rotation of the femur at the hip joint. The axis of rotation is represented by the blue dashed line. The line of pull of the piriformis is represented by the yellow arrow. Now when the piriformis contracts, it creates medial rotation of the femur.